All right, guys, it is 5.55. I am extremely sleepy. Woke up a few times to pee. Nothing remarkable here. Let's see how we look. See what the way it's at. Two thirty-two point two. So gained a little bit of weight from the carb up. Now we'll see what happens when I actually train and, and feel out the right way. I am more separated than I have been. That's for sure. And we'll see if I feel out the right way. All right, guys, very, very flat still. Um, I'm gonna weigh myself. I'm gonna have to eat aggressively to fill out the right way. So let's see here. Yeah, 232.2. All right, so I'm gonna eat a little more aggressive at this meal and uh, take a little more water in, see how I can fill out, but I'm definitely flat. Um, now, you would not necessarily do this the morning of the show. However, you've gotta know how to play things by ear when necessary. So I'm really surprised with everything that I ate that I flattened out. Could be from clonic, could be from a number of things. Um, but I'm going to do these two steak and cheese sandwiches. So there's about six ounces, eh, maybe five ounces of steak on each one of these. White bread, some American cheese. Obviously, I'm going to take glycolog. It should suck all that right up. And I'll take in about eight ounces of water with it. So usually what I do on show day is I'll have eight ounces of water with my food, and they'll just sit in between meals. So I find that when doing that, you don't bloat yourself, uh, but you do keep the water in. You're not pulling it out when you do that. And it is... 8.23, so next time you see me, I should be pumping up and uh, get my last pictures taken. I am about to go. This is a last minute thing that I did here. Anthony came in early, he was nice enough. Uh, I feel pretty shitty today, I don't know why. I don't know if it's from the diuretics that I took, whatever, but I'm, I'm pretty beat up, but uh, I got a special guest here today. Big Mel Chancy. What up, everybody? <laughs> we just, so I seen PJ outside. I'm in, I'm in town. I'm, I'm about three hours on the other coast here in Florida, and I seen PJ pull up to, to the place here, and I've never seen this. I've seen the machines, and I've seen PJ in it and some other people in it, but um, our office is next door with Ford Medical, so I came over, and I said, PJ, i got to see how this thing works. So Yeah, so I'm about to freeze my, my balls off literally in there now. <laughs> Looking tan, man. Well, I got sprayed. I had pro tan spray. <laughs> All right, I'm off to the clinic. I'm off to the ASA agent thing. All right, buddy. Good to see you. Really good seeing you. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Give me a text now that I know you're around. Actually, I'm going to be around a yeah. lot. Okay, I will grow. Okay. okay. Later, Later, all right guys, so here's the deal. I'm, I'm flat as hell, despite all of the carving up. I always feel really, really good when I get out of here, and I'm hoping that this is the jump start I need. I am actually starting to fill out a little bit from what I ate. Uh, my stomach doesn't feel very good, uh, but I'm going straight to the gym after this, so let's see if this does the trick. You know, I wanted to come in yesterday, and just, didn't work out. I actually want to do. You haven't been a lot. You haven't been in this week this much, but I figured no. I see all your stuff doing a lot. I figured you were. Dude, I've been doing everything. Squeeze everything out of the last night. Um, I did a colonic last night. Felt amazing when I got out, but I'm almost wondering if it was too much to do. I just feel like I flattened out real bad, and I kind of like smoothed over. I carved up hard yesterday. Oh yeah. But I think once I pump up, everything will start popping out. We'll see you guys. It's the last minute tricks here to try to pull, pull the body where you want it to be. Today is the last day of the season? Yeah, I'm going to do the final, final picks and video now, so. I always feel really good when I come out of here. Even if it's only for like an hour, even if I was like exhausted on the low days. Let's just wake you up. Yeah, so that, honestly, I'm sitting in a chair in my house and, um, 
I, I fucking literally just fell asleep. I, that's not like me to do that. And I, I told Salvi, I was like, man, I'm just like, I feel like I got my ass beat today. She was like, did you sleep good last night? I really didn't. So it was so weird. So I fell asleep. I take my Ambien. So weird how, how medicine works for me. So I take, uh, I think 12 milligrams is the dose. That's supposed to put you out, right? Yeah. I took it at 1230. Fell right asleep because I was tired from the day. Carbon up, you know, the carbs will make you tired. I opened up my eyes and I thought that I, I slept like all night. Got up to pee, it was dark, was kind of out of it. Came back, looked at my phone, it was 1.15. All right, guys. What I could hold if you phone there. What's up? Hold if you yeah, that'd be perfect. All right, let's see. Saved by cryotherapy, will it happen? All right, that was definitely the coldest that I have ever felt in cryotherapy, but it was good. I needed it. I feel very much more awake now. All the hairs that I shaved are now popping out. Um, so this is good. This means I should be ready to take some final pictures here. We'll see. All right, guys. Next time you see me, I'll be in the gym. All right, now I'm gonna officially pump up before I take my pictures, and I'm gonna teach you guys some stuff that a lot of people screw up on backstage. And I see people backstage running around like they're doing a Spartan race or something. And that is so foolish because you're just burning up all the glycogen that you're supposed to be filling your muscles out with. So when you're backstage, until it is time for you to go, you should be sitting there relaxing. What I always tell people is when they start the classes before you, that should be more than enough time for you to pump up. Like it shouldn't take more than five, 10 minutes to pump up. And I'm gonna go over some stuff today that I'm gonna do in the gym. And I'm also gonna explain some things that you won't be able to do in the gym, but you can do backstage to get the, the best pump. Now, rule number one, specifically for guys, for any female bodybuilder, any female physique competitor, you never ever do anything for your legs. You do not touch your legs. The more rested your legs are, the more separated that they will be. So you don't do anything for your legs, okay? Now, some of my bikini girls, if you feel like doing a few set sets of squats, will pump your booty up a little bit more with blood and make it look rounder or tighter, by all means do that, because you guys aren't worried about separation the way that everybody else is, okay? So you can absolutely do that. But outside of that, you're leaving your legs alone. Now, if you're somebody who has very small abs, like myself, and your abs don't pop, absolutely have to do something to get your abs popping, whether it's sitting on the end of a bench, doing V-bar crunches, but you don't want to be laying around crunching, getting your tan screwed up all over everything, so I'm gonna show you some stuff for that. This is stuff that you can do towards the end. For your upper body, of course you're gonna pump up, but you don't want to pump up so much that you're all swollen, because then you're not gonna see the separation in the muscles. The separation is what's gonna make you look better on stage. The more blood you have, the less you're gonna be separated. So you're doing just enough to fill the muscle out. In between the sets that you do, you should be posing and squeezing. This is gonna keep the blood in the muscles and make you look way better. So when you see bodybuilders that are in the gym and they're like squeezing, and you're like, well, look at this guy's all, all cocky posing. It's actually not true. All right, guys, so if you're doing a photo shoot, much different than if you're backstage. You're not gonna have all this shit backstage. What you wanna do, don't bounce around from body part to body part to body part. You're not gonna fill out the right way, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna pump up the way you want to. You never train like that in your regular life. It's good to mix things up, yes, here and there, but in your normal life, you're probably training one, two body parts. You push them hard, you're pumping them hard. So they're less acclimated to this kind of thing. So what you do, take each of these body parts and just do a mini, mini quick little workout, five minutes or so, and then move on to the next one. So you should be able to do your chest, your back, shoulders and arms in like 20 minutes or so and have a really nice, good pump going. Now in between, and also, you know, you're not worrying about weights, you're just squeezing, taking the muscle through its range, range of motion. Now, in between, you're gonna contract, contract those muscles. You're gonna keep squeezing the blood in, okay? Another great thing you can do that you can do backstage is just variations of push-ups, all right? So you can go find a, a ledge somewhere, anywhere you are at any show. You can get yourself push-ups going like this. You wanna make it more challenging, get a little more delts and triceps involved. You can move your hands all the way in. That 
And then the wider you go, of course, you're gonna get more stretch through your chest. So I always tell people one of the best things that you can do when pumping up is just do lots and lots of variations of push-ups. You're gonna get chest, delts, triceps, you're gonna feel even blood coming into your biceps when you do that. So at this point, you're probably pretty dehydrated. And the question that I get is the day of the show or the day of the shoot, what are you gonna do? The day of the show, I always tell people, keep a decent sized bottle of water, like a liter of water with you, and just keep sipping it. You never want to actually remove water. I eat lighter on the days of the show. I don't, I don't carve up all day, because you should be at that point carved up from the day before. I might have a larger breakfast. A common one for me is like, let's say four or five ounces of red meat and maybe 75 grams of carbs from cream of rice. If I'm super flat, or maybe if I took too much diuretic, I will do a couple of whole eggs and a stack of pancakes. You should be able to load up from that. Thing is, if you are flat, you can't just fill out from eating carbs. The water needs to be there to glycogen load. So when I'm pumping up, I'm just gonna keep sipping my water in between every, every set. Now I added in some Pedialyte to this. This is half of a liter of Pedialyte because I was cramping a little bit. Usually you're gonna wanna shy away from stuff like that until the competition is done because those different things, changing your electrolytes, could make you hold a little water, could throw off your stomach a little bit. So I'm already, just from those couple sets, I can actually feel things are starting to open up, which is good. I'm gonna hop back on here. So you wanna be more rhythmic, okay? Because we're just opening everything up, getting the blood going. But you're definitely gonna also wanna take a good four or five reps on each of the warm-up sets that you do to squeeze, squeeze. Because you're squeezing that blood into the muscle so everything expands. Now, in between each muscle that you are contracting and squeezing, I want you to go and open them back up too. Now, when you're training hard in the gym, everybody will tell you, you don't wanna stretch a cold muscle, and that is true. You can injure yourself like that. When you're backstage, you also have to keep in mind that yes, the muscle is cold, and it can be injured easier, but you're gonna be very, very dehydrated and tired, so things are gonna lock up more. So you're gonna to wanna to do mild stretches in between, so you do not cramp, and you do get everything opened up. This is gonna increase blood flow. So you'll see I'm just doing very, very passive, let's say seven, eight, nine, ten second stretches in between to get everything going. I'm gonna do some more push-ups now. Squeeze it, bringing everything back in. Squeezing. So, what you really need to have, I'm gonna get it and bring it over here, is a resistance band. You can order these online, Amazon, you can get them anywhere. This gym has them. If you don't know the strength of a resistance band, one thing that you can do, very, very easy, it's just common sense, the thicker the tubing is, see the difference? the more powerful it's gonna be. So this is gonna give you more resistance than this thin one. All right, so one of the easiest ways to get blood in your chest is just a good old-fashioned heel we'll crossover. And again, you're just focusing on the contraction and squeezing. What's good about these is you can move your hands in many different positions and kind of switch up the contraction and where the blood's actually going. Of course, it's going to your chest regardless, but you can isolate different areas, different pieces, different parts by coming with a different range of motion. So I'm coming really high now, which I can feel opening everything up through my collarbone into my anterior delts more. And when I come down like this, this is how you would be hitting most musculars, things like that. This is gonna be what's opening you up through the bottom. Then you could do your standard right out in the middle. Just keep working those prime movers. You can even take this into a press. If you feel you're gonna get a better contraction like that. Now we're gonna get more tricep involved. Each time I squeeze there, Press down, and this is all just getting blood in. Back 
next stage, chances are you're not gonna have that. So, what do you do? Take your resistance band and find a pole anywhere. Any pole, right? So I got one right here, all right? What you're gonna do, depending on the resistance, you wanna make it harder, just walk farther out. Very, very simple. Now you can do all kinds of presses. You can change your range of motion, press higher, which is more of an incline. You can even set the, the band up lower and do shoulder presses. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step forward a little bit. I'm gonna keep with that fly motion. And you'll see people backstage doing this. This is all stuff that's easy to do. And you can do anywhere. You can do something for every body part with a resistance band. So you gotta make sure you have one of these. If you don't, most people are pretty cool at shows and they'll let you borrow yours for the most part if you ask nicely. Now you will see there'll be like a pile of dumbbells on the floor too. Those are pretty much first come first serve, but it's proper etiquette to just share them. You know, there'll be some tens and some fives. The girls will be handling those for their lateral raises and things like that. Which is gonna bring me into the next thing I'm gonna do with this band. But as of this point, I can actually feel there's a good amount of blood in my chest. And like I said, you don't want to overly pump anything because it's going to blur the definition. So from here, I'm going to take my same resistance band, step on it, make sure you're centered, and just start doing lateral raises. What's cool about these also is you can simply just keep changing your range of motion, the angle of motion, stimulate your delts numerous angles. You always want to pump up your delts, guys. The more fullness that you have your delts, the smaller your waist is going to look. So to not pump your delts is a mistake. So right now we're just going through the range of motion. You're not trying to go to failure where it's killing you. You just want to feel that blood going in. Now when you're backstage, you're definitely going to, going to see some light dumbo. So over here, i show you some variety that you can do. Let's say all you got is 15s, right? You can take your 15s. Nothing's gonna be more important than the medial head of your delt. So you wanna do lots and lots of medial side that lateral raises, okay? What you can also do, somebody like me, who has very poor posterior delts, just bend right over and start hitting those bent over dumbbell flies, okay? And then, you can come right into a front lateral. And in between, again, you're posing, you're hitting all your different shots. You're hitting your side chests. You're hitting your side triceps. Your abs and thigh, and thigh shots. Your lat spreads. The more you do this, the more you're gonna keep that blood going into the muscle. Keep, keep, keep holding that blood in the muscle. Again, none of this should take that long. So what I'm doing now, it's pretty much real time what you can do backstage. I've done my chest, I've done almost enough for my shoulders ready, can do a little bit more. So what I'll probably do now is I'll grab these dumbbells again. I'm gonna get into the laterals. Like I said, the more blood that you have in those delts, especially the medial head of the delts, the smaller your waist is gonna look. Very, very important. Okay? I'm gonna play around with where we're actually coming up. And then we're gonna go back into the posterior area. Now until I get the stem cell surgery, I'm just not gonna have good posterior delts. But I'm still trying to squeeze some blood into that area. I'm probably hitting rhomboids, things like that back there. Traps a little bit. And again, in between, we're just posing. So we get my blood, squeeze the muscles. We've done chest, which could probably take a little bit more blood, but we've done some delts. Fries, I've already gotten a decent little pump. 
And now we're gonna get into some back. Now what's good about doing all these other body parts is your arms are gonna be pretty stimulated already. So if you're in a gym, a couple exercises that you can't go wrong with are lat pull downs, squeeze. So you're focusing on really squeezing that blood in. Squeeze the muscle as if you're posing the muscle. Like you're gonna hold it, like when you hit your back shot. What I like about a regular lat pull down, may not be something that I do in my regular workouts when I am training, but you can change your grip around quite a bit. So I can come with a, an overhand grip all the way from the front like this, and I'm gonna feel it way, way lower down in my lats. Okay, we're pumping everything completely different now. And I can even go super, super wide. And when you go super, super wide, guys, you're gonna wanna lean back a little bit because you can actually squeeze all the muscles in your inner mid-back when you do this, okay? Because it's more essentially like a row when you're squeezing everything back and leaning back like that. And then you can even go underhand which not only is gonna open up your lats quite a bit, but it's also gonna stimulate your biceps. And then in between, again, we're gonna stretch. Find something you can grab onto, Lean down and just pull yourself back and away. Feel it all open up and then you can actually come across, open up those delts from the back more, get the other side, pull away, come across, open up those delts, get your breather for a minute and just make sure that you're just squeezing in between, getting that blood going through. Now guys, when you're moving around like this, what's gonna happen is a lot of blood's gonna rush to your legs. So on one hand, you're gonna like it because your vascularity will come out. But on the other hand, you will lose some of the separation in your legs. So you don't wanna be doing this for long periods of time. You want your legs to be rested. So when you know you're gonna pump up, you don't wanna pump up, stop, have to start all over again. Because then you're just burning more glycogen. And if you're in a good pose down on stage, you're gonna need that glycogen for a while. So you come back out now. Start with my regular neutral grip. Rest for a second. Now, again, in between sets, I'm squeezing my lats, tensing my lats. Come back, coming back, squeezing that blood back into my chest. Lots of squeezing. You can feel my arms are starting to pump up now. So, you're back, you're backstage. Probably not gonna have a pull down. Probably not, not gonna have some place where you can do pull-ups. What are you gonna do? Take your resistance band. Guarantee there'll be some sort of pull, some sort of bench. You come across, right? Make sure you're even. Step back. And you just built yourself a row. What's cool about this is you can stimulate where you wanna squeeze more just by changing your hand positioning. Okay, now I can pull this higher and engage my rear delts a lot as well. I can pull it lower, more like a barbell row. I can come with a neutral grip, like when you do your seated pulley rows. And then you can go underhand for the underhand row. You can get creative, lean all the way forward like this. Now you're in almost more of a lat pull down. Okay, and I can feel these. Every one of these I can feel. You can change your hand positioning on these. You can go underhand, back up again. The key is just squeezing all those reps, squeezing that blood in. You're not working out to fatigue and work out and burn the muscle. You're stimulating it to contract, to get blood flow in. So, say you don't have any resistance bands, you're back over to those dumbbells that everybody's sharing. Same thing. Somebody left some 25s on the floor, perfect. Grab those 25s, bend over. Now you got yourself some rows to pump your back up, okay? 
It's all about squeezing. You can change the range of motion. That's overhand. You go underhand. Stimulating everything. And if you're worried about time, you can bust out your laterals. Okay? At the end, just to finish and get more blood in. All right, so I got blood on my back, blood on my chest, some blood on my shoulders. I'm gonna come over here. You're gonna wanna make sure you're getting a little bit of extra blood in your arms. They should be pretty warmed up by now. Okay. These, these muscles, just like any other ones, you don't want to stretch them out in between. Find a wall or something you can go down to. Start with your hand neutral. Rotate it. Bring it back in. Rotate it. You'll feel that pull through the long head a lot more when you do that. Same thing on the other side. Get it down. You're not going to have somebody to stretch you like this. Rotate the palm. Come back in. Rotate the palm. Okay. Come back in. Now I can feel just from that stretch and opening, opening that up, I can feel again. Now I always say how much I like the rope because you can pull it around into different angles. Right now I'm just doing your standard rope pull down. I can lean into this. I can, maybe I feel like I want to pump the outer port, portion of my tries a little more. I want to do this, which is similar to those close grip uh, uh, push-ups that I was doing before. Bring your elbows in. I've showed people these. This is going to hit that long head a little more. Okay. And of course, you can just do it the way you're supposed to do it. I'm squeezing that blood in there. All right, so I can feel my tries are pumping up a lot. Can I do more? Sure, absolutely. But I'm trying to mimic what you would do backstage. Had I just come in here today and said, hey, let's do like a, a chest workout, 80% of what I would normally do, I could pump up a lot. That's not realistic though. You're not gonna have hammer strength. You're not gonna have incline. You're not gonna have all this stuff backstage. So I'm showing you what can be achieved with what's backstage for the most part. You got a photo shoot, they gave you the gym, do your thing, do what feels best for you. Backstage is gonna be a lot different. You know, backstage you're not gonna have cable machines like this. One of the things that I love doing when I'm doing a photo shoot, if I don't have my, my bands, sometimes all I'll do for my biceps is a single arm cable curl where I just basically squeeze it until I feel tired, go to the other side, I'll show you what I mean. Let's say, I'll go to the other side, right? In between. Keep getting some minor contractions on this side. A little contraction here and there. And we'll come back to the other side, get my little contractions. Now what I'll often do is, I'll just run through this three times. That's all you really need to do. And if you're doing a long photo shoot, you'll have your resistance bands with you. You'll be in a gym where you can go back out and start stimulating the pump again, okay? And grab those resistance bands again. All right, making sure we're even. Now you get yourself a curl. Get that chest up. Core pulled in. What's cool about these, you want to get a little bit more of the outside head of your bicep. Lean forward a little bit and curl them in like that. Squeeze it hard every time. Come up, squeeze it. Now you want to get in that inside more. This is like when you're on an incline bench. You're getting those incline curls. And then you can come right back to the middle. You can even do these one arm at a time if you really want to focus. I would encourage you to get yourself some cables beforehand and just really practice all the different things that you can do. Learn for yourself so you're not in a panic backstage. So, what have we done? We've done chest, we've done shoulders, we've done back, we've only done a little bit of everything, but I can feel my blood is stimulated everywhere. And if you're on stage posing, 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 you're gonna be squeezing everything really hard. A little, little tip for you guys, as I sit on this bench, because I'm gonna do some abs. If you're posing, you're doing all this, and you don't feel a pump happening, the only way you're gonna get it is by drinking water. Start drinking water. If you don't have water present with that glycogen, your muscle's not gonna fill back up. You've lost that sarcoplasm, the inner cellular water that makes your actual muscle swole. When you don't have that, 
you can't physically make the, the muscle pump up the right way. You can't just create blood out of nowhere. But if you have the fluids coming in, you can drive them around. So what's great about this exercise is it might not be something you normally do, which is not really something I normally do either, but you're gonna open up and just crunch. And you can even switch from side to side, and we're gonna get some blood into the core. Many of you, when you're flat, I know I'm somebody like this, will not look as hard in the stomach. And I'll explain to you why. Genetic shape of the abdomen and the structure of the wall, the structure of the muscles in your stomach, plays such a big role in how you're actually gonna look when you're lean. And I know a lot of guys that are actually pretty shredded, but don't have good six packs. The core is there, and you can see their stomach is flat, but they don't have the separation of the muscles, and a lot of that is genetic. They just genetically don't have deep separation. Google a guy named Boyer Co. Great, great, great bodybuilding, champion bodybuilder, never had abs like that. And it was a genetic thing. Now, some guys have these thick, thick, thick brick abs, even when they're not that in good shape. And that's just genetically big, thick, meaty muscles. So for me, I'm sort of in between where I have a little bit of separation. The actual muscles are very, very small though. So when I'm lean and they're not filled out, they just don't push through the skin. Now, I am not contest level shredded by any means, but if I fill them up, how I am right now, I can get them to pop out through the skin a little more, which is what we want. Now this you can do anywhere backstage. All right, now I'm gonna come back here. Um, the reason I like these balls so much is you can open up all the way, feel that good stretch, and you get a really good contraction. You're gonna exhale and squeeze. And this is gonna help pull those muscles apart and then push blood in so they pop a little more. Just like everything else we're not doing, it's going to failure. I don't know how the light's gonna be back here this time of day. This is where we usually shoot shit, but it's a little bright today. All right, so this is what I'm gonna use as my final check-in. Not really happy with what happened the past 24 hours. It's too hard to pinpoint exactly what it was. I definitely think evaporate played a role, and it's possible that doing the colonic so close also played a role. There were people that believed that the colonic was going to dehydrate me. The combination of the two maybe wasn't the best idea. If I think doing it over, which I can try again, I would have front-loaded my carb up er earlier in the week and started carving up right away and then tapered it down at the end. So one, one thing that I'm noticing is, you know, I can hit my shots. I've lost most of the sweep to my quads, which I didn't have great sweep and inner, inner thigh thickness going into this anyway because I haven't been able to squat. Once I can squat again, I will be able to put more of that size back on, but my knees have just been a mess. Um, you know, from the side, I've been able to, to stimulate some hamstring tra training. Obviously the rear delts are gone and that's not coming back without stem cells. Um, but again, guys, I was in the hospital eight weeks ago. So I'm not disappointed per se. I'm actually pretty pleased. I guess I'm disappointed in the fact that my experiment gone wrong, but better me do it and screw myself up than have you guys do it. So I mean, here's some abs. And you can just see there's just not enough fullness for everything to come out. Um, I do need to get more body fat off. There is definitely fat here that can come off. I'm holding back here in my lower back still. You know, I'm holding nice amounts here. It's probably close to 10 pounds that'll come off my physique as I get closer. And guys, I've been hitting poses in a long time. You know, I'm not trying to get back on stage again. I wanted to just be healthy and lean and light. I had a goal of weight that I wanted to get to. I wanted to hit 225. And if I hit 225, that would have meant I broke 30 pound weight loss. So I hit 228, you guys saw it at the lowest. So I did a little over 25 pounds. What's good about it though is I've brought back a lot of muscle that I lost. Uh, I think my chest came back a lot. My shoulders are gonna be a lot of work. My arms have come back a lot. My legs are, are coming back. Like I said, I haven't been able to squat this whole eight weeks. I tried a couple times and just brutal pain through my knees. So the plan is to do PRP injections on my knees and I'll document all that for you guys and stem cells in my shoulders, but 
like I said, we've had things come back. See, I can't even open up my shots all the way just because I'm so beat up. And that's not what I wanted to do. Overall objective is to go to the beach and take my shirt off and have people be like, that guy looks good. And like, I don't plan on going to the beach and being like, hey guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. if I can take off my shirt and people be like, that guy looks good, like that's my victory, that's what I want. Yeah, I think that my face looks a million times better despite all the crap that's on it right now. My skin, minus what's on it right now, looks good. I need to keep training my abs more. I need to keep training everything else, bringing the muscle back. Um, but overall, I did the best that I could. And uh, I'm going to say this in this video. This is the last thing I'm going to say. I'm actually resigning from the contest today. I'm pulling myself out because I want to judge part of it. It's not fair if I judge. Some of you are going to get overlooked by the judges that haven't been as involved as I have been. Some of the Legion members that I talk to almost every day. And so for that, I'm going to give out a minimum of five, because I can think of five of you off my head right now, but probably 10 motivational, inspirational awards, no matter what. And I'm going to reach out to you guys privately and personally. You guys are going to get your own special thing. And um, there are a couple people that are probably going to win no matter what when the judges look at them. Uh, there's a couple guys that have done amazing jobs. There's a woman who I've seen do an amazing job. So it isn't fair to me to jump in and, 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 and brainwash these judges on the actual personal side and the struggles that I know some of you have gone through, losing the weight and doing the things you have to do. So I will let the judges pick if they think your transformation was better than mine. But I'm actually going to get in and work with the judges on some of this other stuff that I don't want you guys to feel overlooked on simply just there's some guys that did some dramatic things with their physiques just because they know it better. Some of you first timers though, like I know the struggles that you went through and the plateaus that you hit and how hard you guys worked and it's not going to go overlooked. So I'm out. I thank you all so much because I already feel like I won. My real end day is going to be the New York Pro. I'm going to cruise this weekend, take it easy, and I'm actually going to hit it pretty hard from now to the New York Pro. I'm going to do a video series with Joe Reiser. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be doing up some stuff up at Bev's. And uh, after the year that I had in 2017, like going through what I went through in my divorce, which was without a doubt the worst year of my life, like this is the best I've felt and the happiest I've been in a very, very long time. And I realized how important bodybuilding is to me, not just because I love working out, but it's keeping me sane, it's keeping me happy, and it's probably gonna keep me alive a lot longer. So I owe that to you guys. I don't wanna compete against any of you. You guys helped me compete against myself, and that's what really matters. So on that note, you guys have all done an amazing job. Here's my final check-in. I'll have my before and after pics right now. Befores are really, really bad. Um, and I'll actually use those in some of the posts. And uh, you guys have been amazing, as always. Peace out, bye.